Great Coasters International is a roller coaster manufacturer based out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania. Despite the fact that the wooden coaster is a dying breed, GCI has always done what they can to keep it alive. They built their first one in 1996 with Wildcat at Hershey Park, and since then you can really tell that they've perfected the modern wood coaster. GCIs are characterized by their quick transitions, plentiful airtime, and great pacing. They all blend together quite nicely, but also have their own distinct differences in the layouts. Having ridden most of the world's best GCIs, I wanted to today rank my top 15 favorite ones. The big caveat here is I have not ridden any of their rides over in China, and from what I can tell, their three best wooden roller coasters are actually all located in that country. I'm referring to Wood Coaster at Night Valley, Python and Bamboo Forest at Nanchang Sunak Land, and Jungle Dragon at Happy Valley Chongqing. I hope to one day experience these attractions, but for the time being, let's take China out of the equation. There are a few others I have not experienced as well, but I don't think any of those would change the list as much as the ones in China would. So other than those, if they're not on this list and they're pretty good rides, I probably just have not ridden them. Anyways, without further ado, these are the 15 best GCI roller coasters that I've ridden so far. Starting off this list at number 15 is White Lightning at Fun Spot Orlando. This is a GCI on a smaller scale, but still a step up from the average family coaster. White Lightning definitely has its intensity to it, but it's not too much to where I'd say most of the family wouldn't be able to enjoy it. For being less than 70 feet tall, this coaster keeps a great pace throughout its layout. However, when I last rode it in 2018, it was probably one of the rougher GCIs. I'm sure it hasn't gotten much better since then, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Number 14 is Heidi the Ride at Plopsa Land de Pan in Belgium. Our first GCI overseas is actually almost an identical layout to White Lightning. The only main differences are the theming and slight track alterations made so that it could fit into its surroundings better. Something that I also noticed was that Heidi the Ride ran a lot smoother than White Lightning did. Given that the ride opened in 2017 and White Lightning opened in 2013, it makes a lot of sense, but it was still a pleasant surprise. Number 13, Invader at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is one that the park probably intended to be a family coaster, however, I think it's a little more intense than they were probably expecting. From the one ride I've had on Invader, I'd argue that it's more thrilling than Heidi the Ride and White Lightning. There's a really fun drop enclosed by a tunnel, some really good airtime moments, and a lot of quick transitions. I also can appreciate that Invader does not feature a seatbelt like most GCIs. Number 12 is American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. This is where the list really begins, because from here on out, all of these coasters are pretty great. American Thunder is one of three woodies at this park, and is also the newest one opening in 2008. It's a nice long ride that still runs pretty smooth, but it doesn't go higher on my list because I think some of the airtime hills are kind of dead elements. You don't really feel a whole lot in them, especially towards the end of the layout. To me, American Thunder has a really strong layout, but I'm not sure its 82 foot height was meant to facilitate such a long ride time. At number 11 is a Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. I've always found this coaster to be a little underrated and I'm not sure why. I get that it meanders a little at the end, but it's still so much fun. Lightning Racer is one of two GCIs with a racing element where you are side by side against another train. Technically, that means this is two wooden coasters that duel alongside each other. The layouts aren't really different, I mean both sides are pretty fun. Lightning Racer doesn't have the strongest forces by any mean, but it's such an enjoyable coaster anyways that I don't really mind. Breaking the top 10 is Texas Stingray at SeaWorld San Antonio. This is the newest GCI coaster to have opened in the United States, making its grand debut in 2020 right before the whole COVID mess. Let me just say, I'm glad I opened when it did because it's clear SeaWorld would have delayed its opening to 2022 like all their other rides if they had not. Anyways, Texas Stingray is an interesting GCI because it isn't all too intense, but is definitely so much fun and is divided by two distinctly different halves. The first are larger hills and the second are low to the ground quick transitions. Personally, the first few larger elements don't do a whole lot for me, but once this thing gets going in the second half, it is blazing and really good. Again, the only reason why it isn't higher is because it isn't too intense and I think that has something to do with the fact that this was designed by Skyline Attractions. But whatever the case, it's a great fit for this park and enjoyable by all accounts. Number 9, Yours and Drac at Efteling. Going in, I remember expecting a family thrill coaster with a similar intensity to that of White Lightning or Invader, but I was really taken back by how wild this thing was. Yours and Drac tosses you around and rips through a lot of its layout despite a shorter height. Like Lightning Racer, this is another one that is intended to race, though unfortunately when I went to the park, this was not the case. They were only running one train on one side, so I didn't really get the full experience of this ride. But I'm definitely able to look past that and appreciate the ride's layout, which was a fair bit better than I expected. Coming in at number 8 is Troy at Toverland. I know this one will probably spark up quite a bit of controversy. I don't know what it is about Troy, like I wouldn't say I was underwhelmed by it, but for some reason so many people rank this as like the best GCI in Europe and one of the best overall. One of the reasons I think it has this reputation is because it is a really long wooden coaster. Troy feels like it never ends and that extra length is something that a lot of GCIs lack. However, I found that Troy wasn't as back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back as many of the others I've ridden. 
Many of the elements were higher off the ground and those just didn't pack in the forces I was looking for. It's also quite a bit rougher than I was expecting. This isn't a problem in the front row, which happens to be my preferred seat anyways, but it made re-riding this coaster not as fun as some of the rides ranked higher on this list. Troy does have a great pacing to it and its low to the ground elements are terrific, but I think it's ranked a little too high for so many enthusiasts. Number 7 is Apocalypse at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is the GCI that is closest to home for me, unless you count Ghost Rider, which spoiler alert will not be on this list because I consider that to be a CCI. But while we're on the topic of Ghost Rider, I think a lot of people overlook Apocalypse due to the other amazing wooden coasters that can be found in California. But Apocalypse, let me tell you, is very underrated. Since this coaster reopened from its big makeover a few years back, it's now running as smooth as most GCIs and it's the most themed attraction at Six Flags Magic Mountain. In addition, the layout is really intense, it has non-stop pacing, and the tunnels that were thrown in only add to the ride experience. I don't think Apocalypse immediately comes to mind when you think of Magic Mountain, but it really should because I have this coaster easily in the top 5 in the park. Which, for a park with 20 roller coasters, is really saying something. Number 6 is Prowler at Worlds of Fun. This out and back GCI layout takes riders out into the woods through a pretty crazy experience. In my opinion, this ride really lives up to the name Prowler because it feels like it is ripping through the tracks. Really intense transitions, some great airtime, several interactions with the terrain, and a satisfying ride duration. In my opinion, this is one of those quintessential GCIs that I always think of when the manufacturer is brought up in a conversation. It's just a great high quality ride and the best reason to go to Worlds of Fun. At the number 5 spot is Thunderhead at Dollywood. When I went to this park, I had a feeling that this would be my second favorite ride there, but what I didn't know was by how much. So you can imagine my shock when Thunderhead far and away took that title and wasn't impossibly far from number 1 at Dollywood, which is Lightning Rod. Thunderhead absolutely blazes through its layout and maintains its speed beautifully well too. I feel that with a lot of GCIs and a lot of coasters in general, sometimes they'll start to die out a little towards the end. But Thunderhead does the opposite because of its terrain. It'll gain speed at moments when you're not expecting it to gain speed, and that to me is awesome. Number 4 is my favorite GCI in Europe, Vodan Timber Coaster at Europa Park. I know that might be a hot take, but this coaster was out of control during my visit this past summer. It got around a half dozen rides on Vodan, and every time I was pretty breathless by the final break run. This coaster's pacing is just absolutely fantastic, its elements have power and force, and what Vodan includes that a lot of GCIs don't is exceptional theming. That was something that really sealed this off as being my favorite GCI, and actually favorite wood coaster in Europe. At number 3 is Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. I think I built up an image in my head that Mystic Timbers would absolutely be the best GCI in America. Because, after all, it seems to have gained that reputation and I often wonder why. Even after writing it, it doesn't come all too close to the number one spot and I do debate putting it even below Vodon since that coaster just blew me away. But focusing on what Mystic Timbers does do well, it's like a refined version of Prowler at Worlds of Fun is the best way to sum it up. It has a lot of zippy and compact elements that take you out into the woods through an out and back layout. It's actually not too different from Prowler overall and I'd actually argue that that ride is more intense. That said, Mystic Timbers did feel a bit smoother and even more so like a terrain coaster in my opinion. It's also one of the most themed rides on this list which is always appreciated. I don't know what it is, Mystic Timbers just wasn't as crazy as I expected it to be. Don't get me wrong though, I very much enjoyed all the rides I got on this coaster, especially the night rides which is probably the reason it reached number 3 on my list. It's a great high quality wooden coaster and one that I'll always look forward to riding, but I'm still a bit frazzled over why I didn't love it as much as I anticipated. A ride I've decided to rank higher is number 2, Renegade at Valley Fair in Minnesota. This GCI rips through its elements so stupidly fast, and it maintains its speed flawlessly as well. Even at the end of the layout, it doesn't feel like you're going much slower than how the ride started off. Now, what you may have noticed is that the GCIs I rank the highest are the ones that feature the most low to the ground elements. I think there's an argument to be made that Renegade does the low to the ground thing best of all of the GCIs I've ridden, however the higher elements to me don't hit nearly as well. It's still a great overall blend though, and the terrific standout attraction for this park. But coming in at number 1 by sort of a landslide is Gold Striker at California's Great America. And let me just say, it hurts my heart ranking this at number 1 knowing that this park and this coaster will be permanently closing soon. Gold Striker is absolutely one of the best wooden coasters in the world, let alone the United States. Its layout has exactly what I'm looking for, a perfect combination of rip your face off, low to the ground elements, and slightly higher elements that pop you out of your seat going into and out of all of them. Last I wrote it, it was also the perfect in-between of smoothness and roughness, so as far as the way it runs is concerned, I think it's amazing. If you can catch a night ride on Gold Striker where you really can't tell what's going on, there's few ride experiences I've had that can actually match that. So do yourself a favor and get on this coaster before it's too late. In my humble but accurate opinion, Gold Striker is the best GCI coaster in America and of all of the ones I've ridden. So with that, thank you all so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one and would be willing to leave a like and subscribe for more. Also, if you could leave a comment for what coaster manufacturer you'd like me to rank next, that would be greatly appreciated. Until then, I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.